So we're going to get started. All right. uh, I want to welcome everyone who's watching this, uh, all the students, as well as I really do want to thank Jason here, who's uh, from Traditional Medicinals, who's going to talk to us today about the company and walk us through sort of a, a tour, a kind of a photo tour of the Traditional Medicinals facility in Sebastopol, um, and tell us a little bit about the company and the culture. But first, uh, I really need to say thank you to Traditional Medicinals in general, because Traditional Medicinals has sponsored this entire month of food and beverage manufacturing activities. So I really, really want to thank you, Jason, and I really, really want to thank uh, Traditional Medicinals for, for making that happen. Uh, so Jason, it's a good time for maybe you can introduce yourself and, and you might give us just your name and title and just kind of what that means, what you do uh, every day. Hi, uh, my name is Jason O'Neill. I'm the maintenance engineer at Traditional Medicinals. Uh, my job includes pretty much building PM schedules for our, our production equipment, translating our manuals into more of a structure for our maintenance program, uh, collect and manage the data from the PLC systems, control systems that we have on site, that kind of thing. I help build training programs for our technicians, for our maintenance program, um, and a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> Isn't that kind of like the norm? You have all these things on a job <laughs> yeah. description, and then there's, yeah. That 10%, yeah. <laughs> the, there's that 10% duties as, as like assigned or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Everything else. <laughs> uh, well, well, thank you. You know, we're going to rely on you and, and your role to, to walk us through a lot about traditional medicinals today. So I yeah, yeah. Uh, hope, hope you're prepared because I'm gonna ask you a lot of questions. Oh uh, yeah, um, I'm ready. So what we wanted to do before we get started with everything is we wanted to show you just a short little commercial actually of traditional medicinals tea. It's one that is familiar to me because I've seen it on YouTube and I think I've seen it uh, on, on Hulu. So I'm just going to share my screen here. At Traditional Medicinals, we think plants are amazing. All it takes is a closer look, and you'll discover that echinacea can support your immune system. Eucalyptus can help give you a breath of fresh air, and lemon ginger can promote digestion. Every which way we turn, Mother Nature is there to greet us with her amazing healing plants. So the next time you're wondering what makes our teas so incredible, make sure to lean in a little closer. Support your health. Traditional Medicinals. It's amazing what a plant can do. So what I love about that is that I, I, I have literally seen that commercial before and I know the traditional medicinals is like right here in our backyard. And so for me, it's really, really neat to see that, right? You know, you, sometimes you don't realize the major companies that we have right here in Sonoma County and traditional medicinals is one of them. And I'm hoping what you can do, Jason, is maybe give us sort of a, an understanding about what traditional medicinals does and really kind of the scope of how, how big of a tea company it is. Ah, so Traditional Medicinals, uh, they make wellness products, which includes bag teas, lodges, capsules, and bars and shoes. It's the it's fourth biggest tea manufacturing company in the US, just here in the Sonoma County here. Um, yeah, their main office is located in Rana Park and the production facility is located in Spasbo, where I work. Uh, we employ roughly between 180 employees to 200. Um, it's pretty big. And I think it's worth mentioning too, where you guys source your ingredients from. I mean, you guys get stuff from all over the world, right? Yeah, yeah, all over the world. <laughs> yeah, I, there, there are some videos that we're not gonna show today that yeah. I've seen about you know the way that traditional medicinals supports uh, the, the villages around the world in which you guys source your ingredients from for your teas. Um, and it's really incredible what you guys do. And I think it's, um, I think, I think it's something to highlight. And in fact, I do, once again, I want to play another video here to, to really highlight the culture of the company and also sort of that mission of sustainability and, and treating the customers and where, you know, those who grow your, your, your plants all with respect and humility. And so I'm gonna play another video. This is just a couple minutes, but I think it really gives a, a good, clear understanding of, of, the kind of the kind of company that traditional medicinals is. 
So on November 20th, 1974, two really well-principled people, Drake Sadler and Rosemary Gladstar, bagged the first bag of traditional medicinal tea. They pioneered a new herbal medicinal tea category in the United States, and they did it with a new socially responsible business model that took into account all of the stakeholders of the company, which would be our herb growers, our employees, our retailers, and also our shareholders. And they set out to connect people to the power of plants to change lives. So here we are, 44 years later, where our, our factory looks different, our packaging looks different, but our principles are exactly the same. And we've now grown to be the fourth largest bag tea company in the United States. Uh, we have about 180 employees. We all consider ourselves, we have jobs and titles, but really what we all are is we're all stewards of the dream of Drake and Rosemary Gladstar. The thing we're probably most proud of is there's a thousand kids in India that are going to one of five traditional medicinal schools right now where we've, we've built the building, provided the teacher hot lunches, uniforms, a bicycle to get there, and we're really investing in those communities that have really uh, provided the herbs for us to make these great teas over the years. And it's an honor for me to work at the company. Just like all the 180 employees of the company, we're all stewards of Drake and Rosemary's dream. And that's a much bigger and much more responsible job than working as the CEO or working in accounting or finance. And what I like most about working at Traditional Medicinals is I get to be myself. I'm the exact same person at work as I am at my dinner table with my kids, and we foster that for all our employees. One of the many reasons I love to work at TM is that they have a program called Bucks for Grades, which provides employees' children with money in response to how well they do on their report cards. Traditional Medicinals is a great place to work because of the supportive management culture and I really enjoy working with the people. I'm a health and safety manager, and the safety culture is pretty awesome here. So, you know, that was uh, Blair Kellison, who I've known for years, just through my, through my other jobs and through this one. And uh, he's, he's, one of the, he's one of the coolest people out there. And, and uh, I, think, I think he's such a good leader because he cares about the community and he cares about the people. And I think, and that, that shows through in the whole culture of the company, which, which I love. And I'm actually hoping, hoping, Jason, that you can maybe talk a little bit more about that because it, I know I keep on kind of, kind of skimming the surface, but maybe you can go into more detail about the sustainability aspect and the culture. And, you know, I know you guys are a B Corp. Maybe you can explain what that is. Yeah, so Traditional Medicinals is a B-certified company and also Green Business Certified Company. Um, that being said, their values for sustainability are really strong here by reusing or using only organic filter paper, organic string, you know, organic tag paper, main, making the tea bag itself compostable. Um, so pretty much 86% 80, of our waste is diverted from landfills meaning that we're recycling, reusing. One of the things here that I've kind of noticed over the years is that we recycle our used gloves, which is we go through about what 1,300 pounds two to three weeks, two to three times a year. Um, yeah, and we pretty much recycle all those. Uh, the B certification is a certification on renewability, how the company is invested in its people and its customers, um, things like that. And I'm still learning about the green business certification on that itself, but overall sustainability is a big thing here. And that's what draws me mostly to this kind of company is this how sustainable it is and how purposeful it is towards its employees and customers. Mm -hmm. um, I remember several years ago, Blair Kellison that I just mentioned, give me a tour and he mentioned him that they, ju you, they just bought machines that were able to tie the string to the tea bag without a staple. Yes. Because yes. he said that staple was the one thing, the one last piece that wasn't sustainable. <laughs> and yeah. and you, you know, spent the money, <laughs> built the machines, whatever, and then now fully, fully, fully combustible the bag. Yep. That's so cool. But that being said, just to having that not put in a bag is a, it's a big deal. And to do it really fast, the machinery, as you will see in the videos and clips, it's, it's a step forward in making those bags a hundred percent combust or combustible. <laughs> and combustible. <laughs> yeah. 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 That too. <laughs> well, 
So we want to get into a slideshow of images and Jason's going to sort of walk us through uh, sort of a, a slideshow picture of, of the inside of traditional medicinals, including multiple different departments. And so what I'm going to ask for anybody who's watching live, uh, if you have a question that you want to ask for Jason during this entire thing, feel free to ask it on YouTube, on the YouTube live chat and I'll ask it of Jason. Okay. So what are we looking at here? So this is uh, Carlos cleaning the blender after doing the blend, which is they have to do every time they run blend at the end of the day. So he's getting prepped, cleaning the top of the blender. This blender can run about 1900 kilos of herb through it and a single time and inside it looks like a big cake mixer. It's all stainless steel. Highly this, is just, this is blending the actual ingredients Inside of for the particular teeth? Yep, all our blends go through this blender here. Okay. Um, looks like a big cake mixer. Our yeah. Hilda there getting ready to clean. And looks we have like a she's spraying you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they have these big long spray nozzles they spray down inside to kind of knock off all that loose dirt. <laughs> you know, one thing to point out is actually how clean everything is, which is, is really nice yeah. to see. Um, I've been, been in a lot of manufacturing facilities where things aren't as clean as you would yeah, like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this looks very nice. Um, this is our weighing room. They, they weigh the bags in here and they're uh -huh. making their blends. And they got a weighing scale and the, the bag that's hanging off of there. And that's where they use to fill the different blends, suck it through upstairs and then back down into the other side when they're mixing the blends. Hmm. I have a video here. Oh, this is the bottom. This is that same employee, Carlos, on the inside of the bottom of the blender. Another picture of our control panels. Another one over the top of the blender. <laughs> so am, are we seeing, sorry, is this the bottom and then this is the top? Yep, so there's the bottom oh, right there and that's the top. Yeah, it's kind of split between the room. Oh, there. interesting. So it's two different <laughs> stories. Wow. That's... Yeah, yeah. It's a huge machine. All right. So that's blending. Lab? You want to go lab? Yep. You know, the lab is one of, I think, the most surprising things when I went there and visited because you don't normally see a full-on science lab in a food manufacturing plant like this. Oh so. yeah, they have a full lab on site. Uh, here they're getting ready to do the taste test of all the blends for the day. They uh, do this every day, apparently, and test the blends by taste um, this, for the test taste. And this, and this is where they're doing the distillations of the blends. Some, I thought that was pretty cool. That being some crazy little dishwasher, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> And here, there you are analyzing all the herbs. Uh, microbiologist, testing the herb for species and all that. And here they inspect through this microscope all the blends. This is where it gets kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, it's looking for things that are not supposed to be there and making sure it is what we it is with that we're getting. It's so interesting to think that you know when somebody's going through college and they're maybe trying to become a microbiologist or some, some sort of field of science like this, they probably didn't think that a, you know, a tea company would be a, yeah, a good right. viable place. But that's the thing about food manufacturing is there's so much more to it than people think. Oh yeah, yeah, just herb alone. Yep. All right, let's go to maintenance. And that's where you are. Yeah, that is my... So we've got a lot, a lot of pictures here. Um, I'll go through yeah, fairly so, quick and then just tell me yeah. to slow down when we get somewhere. So this is the machine that ties the knot in the bag. Oh, this wow. is the control. This is the control system just to make that all happen. And it does it really fast. You got two PCs on the right corner there. It's so fast that they don't even use PLCs. It's straight to the PC. Hmm. Uh, that's a tube former that forms the tea bags. That is a handcrafted piece of machinery right there. Each one is handcrafted. This is the actual unit that ties the knot, known as a crochet group. This is a tag paper knife. This is actually what cuts the tag paper into a little mm. shape you see in the bag. Does it really fast. It's actually like, I think five knives and one symbol. 
Uh, this is the heat sealer. So each bag gets sealed through this. A little bit more in close, the, the precision of detail that we have to achieve every tea bag. The gaps between the needle and the crochet hooks are what, 0 0.03 millimeters of clearance. So this is the kind of thing that you work on. You maintain these pieces. You Do you fabricate some of these pieces? No, a lot of this is fabricated in Italy. It's and We do do some local fabrication, but we can't get to that kind of precision on our machines. We do have a machine shop. We just can't get to that level. Uh, this is kind of just a, a shot I wanted to get of, of the forklift that we use, these man lifts which are pretty interesting. And then if you notice in the left corner, we have vending machines for our parts. I love that vending machines for your parts. That's for, <laughs> yeah. that's for inventory purposes, right? Yes, yeah. I mean, we don't use it too much right now, but we're trying to get into the more automated systems. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the pictures of doing a rebuild, but the one you were just at. That's one. Yeah, taking all the parts down and cleaning them. You have to do this quite often. Here they're troubleshooting on the ink. The ink. Uh, this machine's getting a PM right now, meaning the parts taken off clean, serviced, and reinstalled. Huh. How often does something like that have to happen on a, on a machine? Uh, every week. <laughs> wow. Yeah, okay. the dust from the tea is pretty, it, it gets everywhere. <laughs> this is one of the control modules for that, that sits up in here. Yeah, this is the control board for those C24s. The tea dust gets in there and just cooks on the contacts. Here we're trying a new gripper assembly. There are ceramic coated uh, pieces, which is kind of, it's hard keeping a tea bag s to sit still on polished aluminum. So they take and, and polish the tips of them with, uh, and polish them and then dip them in chrome, or no, I'm sorry, ceramic. So it provides grip on the bag at high speeds. Hmm. Uh, a little bit more uh, parts of that crochet group. Wow. Uh, more pictures of the rebuild. Yeah, this is what we do every week. This is some of the old schematics we have to use before Adobe. <laughs> so you have to use a magnifying glass. But now most everything you do is online? Yeah, or, everything's online now. Online. Yeah, which is now you can scroll and click. But these old schematics, we have to... This is a fully automated tag splicing, meaning it splices on the fly. This is our inkjet. We actually prints the number, the expiration date on the carton. Hmm. That's a whole nother thing in itself. More mechanical. This is our case packing equipment. This is a video. Though. Yeah, there we go. Wow, that's. <laughs> it's nuts. It's, it, it almost looks like it's sped up because it's going no. so fast. Yeah. That's really crazy. All right. Let's move on to operations. I'm looking, we don't have any questions on the chat yet. So we'll just keep going. All righty. This is our Mezpic casing equipment downstream. Yeah. So, what is this? Sorry, this is where this, it packages this, it? Yeah. So, this sorts it. It all comes to this machine. This machine sorts it into lanes of which blend, and then it puts it onto which case packer it goes on, as you see in the coming pictures. Comes down the spirals through the sorter, starts to get sorted. Uh, uses linear servos to sort it, which are kind of cool. Then that goes into our pick and place area right here where it picks them up and puts them in the case packer lane. You've got, I assume, multiple people in doing maintenance. Does yeah. one person special? Oops, sorry. Uh, does one person special specialize in one machine, or does everybody sort of kind of do everything? No. Well, overall, we kind of have general maintenance, but then in a higher level, we got the EMA tech, um, 
Patrick, where he does more of the email machines, and then I do more of the automation stuff on the downstream, which is what you see right now. Um, yeah, it's not, it's kind of unique. You can't have like um, a mechanic work on the, the electrical as you wouldn't have an electrician work on the mechanics of it. So it's trying to find the balance in between. Mm -hmm. It becomes electro mechanical nowadays because you got a little bit of both worlds in there. Sorry, some of these are so loud. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this machine can do three different case variations at the same time. And this is at the end where it starts to get palletized in cases. This is our pack unit. I'm gonna go through these fairly quick, just looking at time. Oh, sorry. Yeah. This is our case packer. There's a lot going on in here. Resolution's a bit low, so I'm just gonna yeah, yeah. cut it there. Is it, is it really loud in the in the facility? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty loud. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Noticing that. <laughs> this machine has a lot of air cylinders that are always moving. Um, yeah, it's a lot of clacking around, and we got a vacuum pump that's pretty loud. Okay. These are our T elevators. Yeah, so the cartons come out, go up, and then down to the downstream they go. That's cool. Now this is a whole separate room here, huh? So is this what machine is? Is this separate? these are these are the C twenty four, C twenty three. This is in the T machine, but this is from the operator side. These are our operators. Uh huh. Okay. These are this is our old C twenty three machine. Oh, I, I want to say this is 2005. These are old tanks. There's a um, still, these are really more mechanical than electro electrical. Mm. I'm going to click through these fairly quick. Just let me know when to slow down. I think it's so cool that you have the line going above everything. Yeah. That's, <laughs> Makes um, the foot traffic easier. Yeah, I can imagine. So how much, how many boxes of tea do you guys produce in a day? On an average, I want to say 30,000 cases. Wow. So that's 16 in each. Carton. Yeah. Each case has six cartons in it. And uh, <laughs> you guys sell around the world, right? Yeah. And how many employees? It looks like there's a lot of people here. How many employees do you have at the? Uh, well, it's at the facility, the manufacturing facility specifically. Uh, I want to say about seventy-five employees to a hundred. I mean, we got three shifts, though. You guys run 24-7? Yeah, not 24-5. Uh, oh, okay. That's not bad. No. It's interesting trying to keep a machine to run 24 hours. It's kind of an overview of the downstream area. The operators. It's pretty intense just running these machines as an operator level. Okay, so, wow. That was, I think that was really cool just because you get to, it was a chance to see the whole facility. Um, yeah, yeah. Really, so we're on uh, QA, now that's quality assurance. Yep. 
going around inspecting all the raw materials coming in. Hmm. QC check. Uh, so every time we do a service, they go through and inspect that we've done it correctly and everything's clean and they sign off. <laughs> and then last is just a couple pictures. It just says site. So what are we looking at here? Uh, so this is a site department with janitorial. These are the guys going around fixing this, the facility, mm. keeping it clean and operational. <laughs> That's a good way to end it. <laughs> a good thumbs up there. <laughs> well, that was really neat. You know, it's just picture by picture, but it, it gives kind of a good understanding of what we're looking at. Um, you know, it's it's cool to see the different parts, right? You get the you got the whole facility, the manufacturing side. You've got like the the, the maintenance shop, the lab, and, you know. And then, like you mentioned, that's all at Sebastopol, but you have a whole runner park office, which is what, like marketing, HR, yeah, yeah. stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, in, that's incredible. So um, I have a couple more questions for you. And I'm looking, we still, you know, still don't have any questions uh, from, from any students, but I, I would encourage the students to feel free to throw a question up here and I'll, I'll ask it of Jason. Um, but I got some questions for you. Number one, probably the most important, what's your favorite traditional medicinal tea? I have to go with Nighty Night. This is one of my uh, favorite ones. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah, this one, yeah, it seems okay for me. Does the job. It relaxes me <laughs> at the end of the day. I'm an everyday detox kind of guy. Ah, ah that one's yeah. pretty good, too. I and like that one in the summer. Yeah, I, what's interesting is I didn't like the flavor at first, but then I really liked it. Yeah. I can't yeah. explain how that change happened. <laughs> it grows on you. Yep. I, think, I think I just didn't yeah. expect the flavor, but now I really like how it is. <laughs> Um, so, you know, you're in maintenance and I want to learn a little bit more about that job specifically. So what is it that drew you to a career in maintenance? Uh, I, I think for me, it's a love of the machine, learning the technology, just what it takes for raw energy to make something, meaning electrical, you know, pneumatic, hydraulics, whatever it is. Um, that's kind of what drew me to it. Um, and I just got sucked into it after that and just, well, well, how does that work? Oh, how does this work? And, and then trying to keep something sustainably running correctly and efficiently is a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, I like to have the model walking up to a machine and being able to hit the green button and it just fully automatedly run. Um, but what goes on under the hood is what really attracts me to it. <laughs> so what uh, kind of training did you have to get to go into that? Uh, a lot of a broad, um, a broad training, training across all fields, meaning electrical, schematics, reading, physics, blueprints, programming, understanding programming, electronics. I mean, there's just there's a whole bunch of things I've had to go through, through vendor classes and the classes I took at the local JC and just talking to other people at the JC um, to get certifications in like automation or hydraulics and or mechanical. So as far as, you know, you mentioned the interests, but like what kind of skills does somebody need to, to be successful? Cause I'm thinking about the students who are watching this. This is you know yeah. mainly high school students, grades nine through 12, and they're either starting to consider where they want to go or they are like about to make that decision, right? Like maybe they're about to graduate. So, so what kind of um, what kind of skills does one need to be successful in a in a job like maintenance? I think one should have the natural curiosity to draw them to this kind of industry. Um, that kind of just gets your foot in the door. But after that, it's just skills of note taking and and record keeping for yourself and being able to build off of that. But also experiencing it, um, seeing it for the first hand, getting your hands in there. Um, one of the things I really recommend having good skills is the base discipline of understanding a machine on paper um, versus actually out on the floor. That was one of the big things for me, um, understanding a machine by looking at it on paper. So I would say really understanding schematics. And then from there, programming is another one. It's uh, another one that's coming a big one. And electronics, um, along with machinist. Um, those are the classes I would, re or skills that would recommend checking out. Mm -hmm. 
And do you think it's necessary um, or at least recommended to, to go into some sort of post-secondary training program or get a degree? Oh, yes. Yes, for sure. I think just because there's not one degree or path, um, as you can see in these videos and pictures, it's a combination of everything. Um, and then once you get in and getting a little taste of what direction you want to go, because you really can go any direction once you're in maintenance. Mm -hmm. So I do have one question that came through and it's, it's asking about, you know, the, how to start a career at traditional medicinals. Um, you know, so like, what does that look like? It, it, do you recommend somebody, do you guys do internships or is it worth kind of just starting at the first job they can get and working their way to what department they want? Like, what do you, what do you think? I would strongly recommend to just getting a job in any position and then working to see once you get in, um, if this is the right fit or because there's so many different paths of growth once you get in mm -hmm. to go from there. That's kind of how I did it. But I've also seen people come in from the other side where they got a degree first too. Um, and then once they got in, they're like, oh no, maybe I'd rather go into operations, you know, that kind of thing. But I definitely, it's a very unique company. So being in, getting started inside, then seeing where you want to go, I highly recommend. So it sounds like it just kind of depends on what your, what your incentive is, right? Is, is your incentive in a particular job, then that would mean maybe pursue the job first and maybe some of that training. Yeah. But if, if really it's like, you know, you're, you believe in the company and like, so, so say you're the type of person who just wants to work for a company they really believe in and you feel like traditional medicinals is that company. It's like, you know what, get a job anywhere. It allows you to explore all the different career paths within the company and you can kind of make your next move from there. Yes. That's, yeah. That's, that's really good. That's really good advice. Um, I came to work at TM for the company, I started as a mechanic. And then once I got in here, I learned about PLCs, programming, networking, and I kind of ventured off from the mechanic world and more into the networking world. So yeah, um, that's, yeah. <laughs> How long have you worked there? Uh, I started in 2012 and then I left for a little while and came back. Um, meanwhile, taking classes at the JC um, and then previous classes from my previous employments. Um, yeah, that's, I came in as a mechanic. Um, one of the job descriptions was PLC, knowledge of PLC, which is at that time, I didn't even know what a PLC was, mm -hmm. but it really sparked my interest. Um, and then I ended up taking, going to the JC and I started out taking, I wanted to take um, Spanish classes, but I found out they had electronics program. Um, and then I just started off from there and just started taking every class I could get whenever mm -hmm. I could get it. And PLC is program logic controls just for right yeah yeah well that's where it started but then i ended up taking electronics class and i took yeah. electrical class and then computer classes i just wanted to clarify for those yeah yeah <laughs> what the acronym was, so yeah yeah well you know jason i think we're, i'm looking at time and we're, we're right about there and so i want to give you a big thank you for joining us today and walking us through this and also taking all those pictures i mean i can't imagine that you know it was a, a a, a small task to take <laughs> the hundred something pictures and videos. <laughs> so um, we, we really appreciate that. And then once again, we want to thank traditional medicinals for, for sponsoring this entire month of virtual activities. So, um, and then thank you to every student who's watching. We appreciate it. So Jason, you have yourself a, a good day and I'll see you later. All right. Thank Thanks. you for having me. All right.